Welcome to Finite Element Tutorials. In today's lecture, we're going to be learning how to apply a non-uniform non ground wind due to the launch vehicle being on the pad. Uh, the longer the vehicle is on the pad, the more likely it will be subjected to ground wind environments that could damage the vehicle. So Leafy One will guide us through that tutorial today using static analysis. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another farm and tutorial. Today we're going to uh, apply the second prop, second question for this one. We're going to apply the boundary test, a static analysis for boundary value, which is this value, and then see um, how's the stress distribution. This is similar to your previous project with the nonlinear district, uh, sorry, non-uniform distributed load. So the load is applied as a horizontal pressure with this value. It's a coordinate related pressure. And the amplitude here is usually is 0.1375. But in your problem, you have a 1.25 for the factor of safety and 35% increase, sudden increment for the stress, so the highest boundary or the upper level for your applied force should be 135% and then times the amplitude you have here. And so similar to previously, we're going to, well, this is the, this is the model for the, from the last uh, homework sorry from the last video and you can see here before we start i want to show you this i have this result aborted sorry um let me go to the job so i have this result aborted if you see the monitor you will see that we have this one uh, and when they enter the second step uh, this is when they enter the second step. So you can see that there's a lot of um, magnet, uh, like a lot of trials here. One U, two U, three U, four U, and five U, and then it dies. So this usually is because your mesh somehow uh, usually is a coarse mesh, and for some points. It has a singular point that the result couldn't actually converge and that will cause this problem. And you will see a lot depends on your mesh and sometimes your load and everything, uh, this can happen. So when this happens, so you have two ways to do it. First is uh, decrease the load. The second one is to change your mesh. It can be finer. Sometimes you make it coarser, it also works. Because if you make it coarser, it means the stiffness is increases. So it can the, the actual displacement will be smaller. So it depends. Uh, so today I just want to teach you like how do we fix this problem? Uh, fix this problem. So usually it will say too many attempts made for this increment and it reaches basically it means it keep decreasing the time trial time until the minimum we set i think we set it to be 1e minus 6 that's why the next step is smaller than 1e minus 6 so this is the entire process will stop it but okay anyway let's start from very beginning so from last time we have this frequency analysis. Now we suppress this frequency analysis, create, since this is static analysis, we create static. Called, um, boundary test. And should after preload. And this is also nonlinear. Usually nonlinear will have that problem. We have here initial value, initial trial time, make it 0.1, minimum is 1e minus 5. You can make it even smaller, but it actually doesn't matter. 
but let's make it smaller. One minus six, and maximum number of increment a hundred. That means if you still remember when the trial time is smaller than this number, then you will have that error. Now once created, uh, let's move to the load. This is a preload we have. Now we are going to apply wind pressure to all the left hand side of the X axis. For example, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we're going to select all the face here. So we create a surface, call it uh, like a, uh, create a load, call it like a wind pressure. And we use surface traction for that. And uh, let's let's create this surface set. Call it um, surface of attack. Attacked. So we carefully select all the surface on the left hand side because the wind. If you see from X Z direction, the wind is attacking from left to the right. and select everything, all the surface here. Make sure you select surface carefully. Don't select the shell edge. And then you can put your mouse on the surface, wait for like one or two seconds. And it will show the uh, surface shape. And that's the correct selection. Choose the brown and then the Oh, you need to select the traction uh, distribution here. I forgot, uh, well, we can do it later. Anyway, so the amplitude, what we should enter is 0 0.0633. So 0 0.0633 here. And RAM, we are going to apply on the undeformed area. And the distribution, we know that this is a nonlinear distribution. So we create an analytical field here. Call it Y district distribution. We cut, we use the formula here. So remember the power is not power, it's POW in Abacus. So it should be Y divided by 720.47. Y divided by 720.47 to the power of 0.18. And this should be a general traction and the traction direction is selecting the traction direction here. And the traction direction should be positive X direction. So star point zero, 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 end point one, zero, zero. This give you the vector one, zero, zero as the apply the direction of traction direction, which is X direction. And then when earth, oh, this one, change it to the Y distribution we have and then done. You should see the distribution here. Uh, let's see x, y. So you can see the distribution, those horizontally distributed. And then now actually we can directly run it, but when you run it, you should have the same arrow as my as I have. Uh, sorry. You should have the same arrow as I have. You sh may or may not have the same arrow. So if you have it, you can go to the mesh and now you can change your mesh size. I would suggest change this size. Um, go to the XZ. So I, I would suggest to change this size. Which means the cross section size. Okay, so instead of eight, let's make it 15. Or even make it larger, let's make it 20. So you can make it smaller or larger if your hard disk drive, uh, like your 
uh, space for your hard drive is not large enough, you can try to make it smaller, but not too small. Small, otherwise it's not correct solution. And then um, usually finer will be better. And then now you can see that it look like this. It's way finer than previously. And but notice that how many elements you have. Right now I have 12,000 uh, elements, it's still okay. If you have more than 10,000 elements, then probably it will take very long time for you to finish the job. So don't do it. Now let's submit. Check the monitor for static analysis. That's also one benefit for model dynamics. Model dynamics will not have this convergence problem. And because static has a nonlinear geometry, it has, if you use nonlinear for your static, it will have this problem. So all the U, one U here is Abacus try, first try to increase by 0.1 seconds and see whether it converge or not. Not 0.1 second, it will say, I would say 10% increment and see whether it converges or not. If it converge, then it will move on to the second one. If it doesn't converge, you can see the trial time decrease and then and see whether it's convergent or not. And then because it's convergent, so the step time, it keep increasing. And until one step is too large, and it's not convergent anymore, and it will decrease again until it converge. So, this is doing the analysis. So you can see the first step is slower than previously. Uh, and also more like those tri trials compared to last time. But it's finished successfully. And then it went to the second step. You can see the step number two here, which is our nonlinear, uh, sorry, non-uniform distributed low. So now it went to uh, if you check the step time here is 15%. So 15% down with your analysis. It has one like a uh, unsuccessful trial here. You may still have problems here. Depends on your mesh size or depends on a lot of things. But always remember whenever you have the problem aborted, a problem before you can change your mesh or if you couldn't make it work for your case you can decrease the load we have so you just need to remember that in real life we change the mesh but in this project you can decrease the load to make it work <clears throat> i can see that it's finished too without any trouble anymore it's completed we can see the results, check the result here. So because the mesh is kind of fine, so we don't want it in the option common, we do the free edge. So it won't have the mesh line anymore. Now we do the contour plots and choose displacement and we need U1. And the last frame, the last frame is the result for the static analysis. 
So now if I want to check the displacement at the top, what should I do? I can do query and then node and then select the node at the top. Now you can see that displacement is 20, U1 displacement. I select U, U1 here. The displacement is 26.5 inches. So that's the nonlinear analysis for the geometry. So you need to, what you need to note is uh, when you apply this nonlinear step, it always has a possibility that your job will be aborted. Uh, if you follow my settings, it probably will be fine, but it's hard to say. I cannot guarantee 100% that your model works. So if it doesn't work, try to change your mesh, make it finer or coarser first. Usually make it finer, it will work. And then if, we, if you still couldn't make it work, just reduce the load to like reduce by 30% or even 50% for this magnitude. And then just write it in your report and just uh, remember that in real case, we cannot change the load. We need to modify our mesh to make it work. So that's all about this non-uniform distributed uh, static boundary test. In this problem, in this question, we actually apply the maximum load that we can have to assume that this is the this is the response or stress state after the impulse after the wind comes. But is it true? Like, is it the actually what we have in the real life? So we are going to compare that to a model dynamics and see whether model dynamics give you the same result as our static boundary analysis.